Testing. Yes. Welcome, CY. I'm so happy to see every single one of you. Not everyone is here, but I see some faces, some familiar faces, and I also see some new faces. So, guys, I actually promised media that I would stay right here and not move. Should I do that? She. Ah, who am I kidding? Valeria, I'm sorry. I'm going to be moving. Okay, um, guys, I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for the opportunity to just, like, come here and uh, speak to you, God, to you guys about what God has put on my heart. Um, the topic of today is called image. And um, the student lead, if you guys don't know, CY has their own student lead. Um, that get to run the ministry, that um, make decisions, it's pretty cool, um, and really just uh, pour into the ministry, whatever you guys like to do. Like, for instance, Purposely Driven was all them. I'm um, so grateful for the student lead. Some of them are here, and not all of them could be here today. Um, but let's get started, guys. All right. So... Uh, if you guys want to stand and y'all pray for me and I pray for you, yeah, let's all stand. Um, we're a church that love to celebrate victories. Uh, one of the things that, you know, we've been, it's a cultural thing in our church is that we, we focus on the positive and not on the negative, right? Um, so uh, think about something that has happened this week and it could be something just as little as uh, getting an A on an assignment, uh, well, my victory this week is I hope that you're watching. Uh, Alejandra, I hope that you're watching. I don't know what camera I'm on. But um, you are my victory. And I know it's crazy to say, well, how is she your victory? Uh, she's in the hospital. You're my victory because I know that God is going to do something through your story. And I can't wait to see what what you, how impact. It's impactful already how your, your story is impacting uh, people's lives around the country and here in our ministry. But I'm just so grateful for your life and you're my victory. And I have another victory, guys, uh, I want to share with y'all before we, we, well, let me pray first so y'all can have a seat, right? Um, Father, I thank you for today and I thank you for who you are. I thank you, God, for the word that you put on my heart, God. I just pray, Lord, that every single person in this building will walk out differently. Um, and that the word that was said tonight, Father, would just be embedded in their hearts so much, Father, that they come out of here knowing who they are in you. In Jesus' name, amen. You guys can have a seat. Um, guys, so there's another victory that I want to share. Um, my dear friend, Erica, uh, <clears throat> went to the hospital today, to, uh, to her appointment, to get her uh, gender reveal. And how many of you think that she should tell us right now? <laughs> Woo, yes! Peer pressure, peer pressure. I'm just saying, you should totally do it. Um, you should totally just say it like right now. I'm, I'm kidding, y'all. Well, to, if, if she won't tell, well, she wanted to tell me, but Victor <clears throat> was so mean. Um, but that's okay. I guess I'll wait. Um, if you have your Bibles with you, go to Matthew's chapter 8. There's a story in the Bible um, that I want to really just like take an image, take a picture of it. If you have your phones out, you can do, you can take your phones out if you have your Bible. If you're a note taker, who's a note taker here? Like who takes notes? Yes. Thank you for you guys who take notes because that's, that's how I know you, whenever you listen to, to a preaching, you go back home and you study it. You know, you don't just, just come here and listen. You actually, okay, like, is she saying, what she's saying, is this, is this true? Is this really in the Bible? So um, just go to Matthews 8, and I think, um, is this going to be, oh, cool. If you don't have it, it's actually going to be up here too. So I'm going to go ahead and read it. It says, When he had come down from the mountains, great multitude followed him. And behold, a leopard came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Then Jesus put out his hand and touched him, saying, 
I am willing, be cleansed. Immediately his leprosy was cleansed. And Jesus said to him, see that you tell no one, but you go your way, show yourself to the priest and offer the gift that Moses commanded as a testimony to them. Now, before I get into this story, there is a saying that a lot of you might know, right? There's a saying, if we can actually keep the, yeah, let's keep it up. So let's keep it up the whole time. There's a saying in um, that you guys might know. It says, a picture is worth a thousand words. Now, today we're talking about image, right? So if you take a picture of something or like you could see in this picture, you can see people's emotions, what they like to wear, fashion, right? If you're a selfie taker, you take pictures of maybe your face, your makeup. Uh, maybe you can, you can tell people uh, type of uh, their artistry, right? You can tell a, a million things through pictures. So I want to do something with you today. Do you trust a person that's right next to you? Yeah, okay, now take your phones out, everyone. Take your phones out, take your phones out, take your phones out. Give it to the person next to you. Trade phones, trade phones, trade phones, yes. And I'm just going to share uh, a couple photos that were in my, in my phone. So as you guys see in an image, I told you, right, that you can see somebody's emotions. You guys see that my daughter is, like, super cute, right? Uh, this was the winter storm that we all got, like, a week off, right? So I want you to take a look at the last seven photos in your friend's phone. Go ahead. Take a look. Ooh. Ooh. Ah, I see some people back there. We're supposed to uh, be switching phones. What happened? Y'all switch phones back there. Volunteers, y'all switch phones too. So are y'all not going to switch phones? That's messed up. Okay, now I want you to take a, a picture of yourself on your friend's phone. I, I want you to take a picture right now in this moment. Take a picture and tag Somo CY. Take a picture on your friend's phone and tag Somo CY. If your friend doesn't have in Instagram, just send it to your mentor, and your mentor will, will uh, upload it for you. Now, y'all took the picture? Yes. Tag Somo CY. As y'all can see, in my last seven photos, at the time, at the time that I'm, I did this PowerPoint, you can see my daughter, you can see my husband, you can, you can see I love coffee, you can see the beautiful Mila. Like, you can see th those are the things I like taking pictures of, right? So just going back on the story of the leopard man, okay? You can see that there is a man who is sick. And he has leprosy. And that Jesus was there. A great multitude followed him. So let's just take a picture of this image right now of this man, okay? Just take a picture. If, for some of you who, doesn't, who don't know what leprosy is, I'm going to just let you know right now. Um, in history, leprosy was a terrible disease. Kind of like cancer. It wasn't curable. According to Jewish laws and customs, one had to be six feet distance from somebody who had leprosy. It even mentions that, let's say this 150 feet, let's say hanker over there, that if a person with leprosy had leprosy, if the wind was blowing for you not to be contaminated, you had to actually be at that far away from that person. Leprosy was a contagious disease, a disease that even people back then said that whoever had leprosy, you were already dead inside. It even mentions that, that society and religious people hated leopards. Um, people believed that you were under God's judgment, that you deserve what, the sickness that you had, that you were never going to be cured, and that you just didn't deserve mercy. In fact, in Jesus' times, people boasted about how badly they treated leprosy. So they bullied people who had leprosy. Yet, we come to the story of this leper man that came to Jesus himself. Now, I don't know about you, but when I take 
a look at this picture, this image of this leopard man, I can tell that he's sick. He's in desperate need of change. But unless you guys know that when we're doing recording a video, you can see the before, the middle, and the after. But with an image, you can only see in the moment. What I want to know, what happened to this man? How did he get leprosy? I want to know, did he have a support system? Did he have friends? Did he have people who loved him? Did he, did he have a family? Why? Why did he get leprosy? And, and all these questions, if you're reading stories in the Bible, like, I want to get details. But the truth is that when we're sick or we're going through a challenging time or a moment in our lives, the first thing that we begin to see or do is think of ourselves differently. There are three categories, important categories, that I want you guys to really just understand about the message that, I'm, that I want to convey today to you. The way you see yourself is important. The way others see you is important. The way God sees you is important. So those are three different categories, right? A lot of times, yourself is your self-esteem, your self-worth. Are you confident? Um, when you look at yourself, what do you think about yourself? What do you see? Maybe you're very confident. Maybe you don't struggle in that area. But how about others? Do you compare yourself to others? How do you see yourself through the eyes of other people? And then the last one is just like, do I really care what God sees in me? Do I really care enough to know what God wants, to, what wants me to know about me through him? And the truth is that nobody really cares sometimes what God thinks. But I want to break it down to you today um, for the first one. When we really don't know a sense of who we are, we tend to negative talk ourselves. And I'm going to give you a little bit of an example of negative talk, right? This is what we do when we don't know who we are or, or we have a low self-esteem or we don't value ourselves. Maybe these are examples such as, man, I'm really going to fail this grade because, uh, man, this virtual learning is just not happening. I'm just going to, I'm a failure. I'm going to flunk. I'm going to be in the same grade. That's what you think about yourself. Or maybe like uh, my, my family's having problems. Um, my dad's not, he's never been in the picture. I'm never going to have that, that perfect home. That's what you see in yourself. So those are negative self-talk. And when I think about the leopard man, I think about what did he think in, about himself? Because as I was saying, leprosy was a sickness that was uncurable. And people didn't want to be around you. So what did this man think about himself? Did, did, did he wake up every morning believing, man, I'm going to be sick and I'm going to stay in my condition? I'm just going to live this way? Did he ask for help? That he, he, he didn't get people interactions because people didn't want to be by him. So I'm sure he woke up every morning, every night, every time he went to sleep, he was thinking something bad, just low about himself. But the truth is, if you feel like you're confident in yourself, well, maybe you'll relate to the second category. And that's others. A lot of times, well, everyone, we are constantly evaluating ourselves. Constantly evaluating ourselves. If you say that, oh, like, I ain't constantly evaluating myself. I know who I am. Then good for you. But I'm going to let you know right now. If y'all got brothers and sisters, y'all already been compared because your mother or your father were able to tell you, why can't you be like so-and-so? Have you ever heard that? Why can't you get grades like so-and-so? No? Why can't you, you be calm like so-and-so? 
You've never heard that, but let me tell you something. My mom did an amazing job not comparing me and my sister. For some of you who don't know, I have a twin sister. And let me just say, I was constantly getting compared to my sister. Like everything, like, oh my God, Liz, like, why is your head so much bigger than your sister's? I'm like, we're, the, we're twins. Like, are you serious right now? Like, oh, my God, Liz, like, why don't you do your makeup like your sisters? Or Liz, like, what's up with the friends you hang out with? Or Liz, like, why don't you dress with your sister? Do you see how much evaluations that I was getting when I was in high or, You know what? Beth, come over here. Come. Just come really quick. Come, 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 come really fast. You see how much pressure... Take a look at everybody. See, I see it in your eyes. Y'all are evaluating us right now. Right? I, I've been getting it 32 years. We've been, we've been constantly getting evaluated. Thank you, sis. <laughs> I see it in your eyes. And the thing about this, whenever you compare yourself to another person, then that's when anxiety kicks in. That's when depression kicks in because now... You're trying to get the approval of somebody else. In reality, you don't need anybody else's approval. In reality, you need to see yourself how God intended you to be. And that's what I really want to share with you guys today. Have you ever asked yourself, how does God see me? Like when you're sitting there thinking about the worst of yourself or when you're sitting there comparing yourself to other people, do you really like, like really take it in? Like how does, how does God see me? Well, I'll let you know how God sees you. Y'all want to know? Yeah? Okay, so God created men in the image, in his image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. Genesis Chapter 1, 27. I believe to have a good sense of self and to have a good sense of others, you got to know what, how God intended you to be. So God really desires for us to have a purposeful life. Now, a lot of you are like probably looking down like, no, nah, that's not me. That's not me. Like he really desired for us to be joyful. God desires for us to know that we're all not perfect and that we all fall short of his glory. God wants you to know that when you draw closer or when you draw near to him, that he can make you clean and that he can purify you. God wants you to know that, that he loved the world so much that he sent his one and only son God wants you to know that all things, not one thing, but all things were made through him. And without him, we would not be here. God wants you to know that he has a plan for you, a hope and a future. God wants you to know that you're his artistry, his workmanship. That you were created in Christ Jesus for good works. See, I can sit here all day and let you know what God wants you to know about yourself. But the problem isn't understanding. The problem is, do you really believe it? Do you really believe it? Do you really believe what God says about you? Do you? Because he wants you to. He wants you to know. He wants you to know him in an intimate way. He wants you to see yourself the way he sees you, how he created you. Your heart belongs to God. And I don't know how many of you who are here, who are living this life of, I'm not good enough. I'm a failure. My parents are separated. Or maybe you're comparing yourself to others.
but it doesn't matter how hard you think or how far you think you are from God, He really wants your heart. He desires you so much. He desires for you to know that when you walk out of this building, He wants you to be different. He wants you to know that you belong. He wants you to know that you're leaders. He wants you to know, hey, I know that you're going through this tough time, but I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Search for me. I'm here. But we rather know what we think. We rather negative self-talk. We rather let other people say what we think, uh, who they think that we are, but we forget that God, God really, really, really wants us to know. He wants, he desires for us to be genuine with him. So do you believe it? You know, I, I always tell my girls in small groups, I'm just so grateful for them. I'm so grateful for the fact that they're so young and, listen, and listening to to the word of God or being in a small group because I didn't have that. I gave my life to Christ at 22 and it was the best decision I've ever made. And, t- and it was since 22 until now, I'm 32 years old. I've been serving God the last 10 years in youth ministry, pouring into young women, pouring into young men, wanting you guys to know that you guys have purpose wanting you guys to know that you don't have to do life alone wanting you guys to know that you can do more in leadership and I don't think I honestly don't think that there is anything better than that so we go back to the story Of this leopard man. I'm going to give you two practical ways. If you're saying, Liz, I don't want to see myself that way anymore. I don't want to see myself through others. I want to see how God intended me to be. Well, there's something in this story that, that it's really impactful. It says that in verse 2, and behold, a leopard came and worshiped him saying, Lord, if you're willing, you can make me clean. Come. This leopard man didn't, didn't have his mom or his dad or I don't even, his family to say, hey, come to Jesus, come to Jesus. You're invited. Or maybe you guys were invited here by a friend or by your family members. But no, this leopard man didn't do anything like that. He came by himself. He made that decision. But then it says, worship Jesus, a man that he doesn't know. He didn't know he was going to be healed. How did he worship Jesus? He worshiped Jesus by coming and honoring him. He worshiped Jesus by kneeling down. He kneeled and said, Jesus, Jesus, if you're willing, are you willing? If you're willing, make me clean. And perhaps some of you can't relate because y'all ain't got leprosy, right? Thank God. All of y'all will be contaminated. <laughs> Included I, right? But maybe it's your heart. Is it your heart that you need to give to Jesus? So what is it? What is it going to take? Worship Jesus with respect. He worshiped Jesus with the confidence that Jesus could make him more than healthy. It wasn't about him being healthy. It's so that he could be clean. I just want to invite you guys today. I'm not going to make an altar call. I believe that a lot of you have already made the decision in your heart that you want to follow Jesus for the rest of your life. The call I really want to make 
Jesus just to come worship with me. Would y'all do that? Do y'all want to worship with me? Come to the front. I ain't got leprosy, y'all. I ain't got cancer. I ain't got nothing. Come. Come to the front. Come. Just like kneel down. It all starts by kneeling, right? It all starts by making a difference. Just come. Do something different. Y'all want a better relationship with God? Y'all got to be different in front of your peoples. Yes. Come and worship with me. Hey, Alex, you want to minister through? Go ahead. I believe God is healing hearts at this moment, including mine. (laughs) And just ask him, just close your eyes. Close your eyes. What do you see? What do you see in yourself? What is it that is stopping you? What is it? What's that negative self-talk? Are you constantly comparing yourself to others because it's not about that. It's about Jesus. So close your eyes and just if you want to raise your hands, raise your hands and just just worship him. Just worship Jesus with your heart. God, we need you. We desire you, Father. We desire you, God. We need changing. We want to follow you. We want to follow you, Jesus. We want to worship you. Despite our condition, Father, we want to worship you. Teach us your way, God. Thank you guys for tuning in to today's message. It's an honor to have you guys here. And please, follow us on our social medias at SomoCY on Instagram, on Twitter, and on Facebook. Keep up with us. Keep up with all the things that we're doing uh, throughout this year through our social medias. And also, if you are in the area in the Metroplex, please come visit us at 2200 East Park Road, Iglesia Cafe. If you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today, please write down in the comments, I have. Please write it down. We're going to be looking through them and we're going to be praying for you. We're going to try to get connected to you. And we want to be in this road with you. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Please like our stuff and also hit that bell icon so you can keep up and get notified whenever we have new things coming up. So hope you guys enjoyed it. God bless and we'll see you next time.